This is what Audacity looks like when you first open it. You'll see a set of tools, including some fairly familiar looking buttons uh, in the upper left hand corner. These are uh, following a recorder metaphor, like a cassette recorder. Um, and they have the functions you'd expect, pause, play, stop, go to the beginning, go to the end, and record. You'll have this icon here selected. This is uh, not very important at the moment. I'll show you how to do that, use that later. The, um, the first thing you want to do is select the microphone. Now I'm using an ATR2100 microphone. And so I select that. Built-in microphone is usually terrible. You don't want to use it. Mono, because I'm, uh, it's only one microphone. Might as well just record it mono. Now, for the output, built-in output is OK. Uh, or you can select, you can route it to some other device that won't make a sound. Or you can use your headphones. Um, what I suggest is turning the volume all the way down. You, I don't like to hear myself when I record. I only want to hear um, if there's a Skype call or a hangout. I want to hear the audio from that, but I don't want to hear myself. I'm recording myself. And for the ATR2100, I always have the mic level turn all the way up. You can experiment with that, see what works for you. When you're ready to record, that is before the start of a Skype call or a hangout, you hit record like this. And you notice it starts recording, monaural track. You can see its progress. Now, this is only zero to 14 seconds here. That's probably not quite enough overview of what's going on. You hit Command-3, you can zoom out and see things progressing a little more slowly. Now, every time I speak, there's a little squiggle there, and that's the sound. Now, some point prior to really initiating the recording for the interview or the conference call, you're going to want to create a sharp sound that can be used to sync this to the Skype track. So what all you do is take is say clap your hands like this. Notice that creates a nice sharp spike right there. You can see it right there. And that what we'll use to sync. So we'll go around to each person and say, now you clap and um, so on. And then we use that clap to, to sync up to the call. Then you go ahead and record your voice as I'm doing now during the call. And this could go on for you know, any, any length of time. Um, when you are done, you will, you can stop just by hitting the space bar. If you decide you want to record more, you go to the end of the track with this button here and then just hit, hit shift R and keep recording. It creates a little dividing line there that you can use to separate that out. But, um, and you continue recording and continue recording. You could also record onto a second track, but that can sometimes be a little complicated. I'm not sure I recommend that uh, unless there's a, a really good reason. Now, when you're done, you hit the space bar, that stops, or you can hit the stop button. Now, the what will then ha take place is you have a track recorded. You want to save the project and you can do this beforehand if you want. Save the project off. That will save the sound and all everything else with it. Um, so I'll say I'll call this sample audio track. That will save an Audacity project. Okay. So it's saved now, and uh, what I recommend is not messing with this at all. Um, unless you know there's something in there you definitely want to edit out. Um, you may want to save, th this would be your raw audio, you may want to save, keep this saved, and then copy and paste this track into another project for editing. That way you don't lose anything. The, um, you can easily remove things from here uh, simply by selecting them and hitting the delete key 
Um, there's a lot of different editing features you can do. I'm not going to go to over them now. You, you, generally, you don't need them at all, unless there's something you really want to take out before you send it to the engineer. Now, the next step is to save this at using the export function. And we want to export it into a lossless format. I recommend either AIFF or WAVE. Either one is fine. Either one works. Do not use MP3 or um, any of the other lossy formats. So WAVE is fine. Um, and then you just, you have options. You can, well, for some of the formats you have options. For this one, you don't. And just save it. Um, you don't need to fill in these if, unless you want to. I usually put in the uh, the year, just, and you can also put in any comments. And save it. And then you go to, um, you go to that, f that file. And you've got, you see, you've got this file here, the .wav file. It's 9.4 megabytes. Not very big, but it was a very short recording. It, it can get quite large with a full-length full call. And then you simply, you can compress it. Now, if you're not on Mac, um, there's software on Windows that also does compression very easily, like 7-zip. Compress it. And now you notice it's about a third smaller, which makes it easier to uplo upload and download. And then you simply put that on either Google Drive or Dropbox and, and let the engineer know where it is and he can pull it off. Uh, it's going to be quite large. It's probably going to be hundreds of megabytes, even compressed. Now, when you're done with that, you're done. What will happen is we'll take this clap and use it to synchronize. and we'll. Um, so that's all you have to do. You don't have to be an Audacity expert. You just have to know how to hit record and select your inputs. Um, notice, again, notice that I've turned the monitor all the way down because I did not want to hear myself as I recorded. Now, if you want to hear it afterwards, you just turn that up and then hit play. Okay, so that's that, and I hope to hear from you soon.